Come on in, guys. Welcome to Idled Out, where we talk all things Survivor. My name is Luke, and today we're talking about Survivor's best birthday parties. Yes, it's my own birthday weekend, and in between all the existential dread of growing old, another year around the sun got me thinking about the handful of times we've seen Survivor players celebrate their own date of birth on the island, and how fun those scenes often are. Yes, they're a joyous break from the game for viewer and player alike, as the players get a chance to step out of the game for a moment and just enjoy one another's company on a human level, as well as acknowledge just how cool it is that they're literally spending their birthday playing a million dollar game. I mean, how awesome is that? Surely no one could be upset that they're spending their birthday playing Survivor, right? So put on your party hat, get yourself a slice of cake, and make sure there's no dishes in the sink for the birthday boy to do. Let's talk about Survivor's most iconic birthday celebrations. At number five is Wes, who celebrated his 24th birthday during Survivor San Juan del Sur. During the first round of the merge, Wes turns the big 2-4, and is first wished happy birthday by Josh around what appears to be late morning. I love the look on Wes's face. He's just pleased that someone was thoughtful enough to remember his birthday, because his dad sure didn't. Yes, Wes's own father, Keith, just plum forgot about his own son's birthday. When Keith realizes this birthday blunder, he does the old dad frantically stopping at Toys R Us on his way home from work and buying the first thing he sees on the shelf routine, and gets his son the hot new toy every boy wants, a crab. Wow, thanks, dad. If you've seen San Juan del Sur, you know this is a very on-brand moment for Keith. The Elder Nail and Nugget Nail dynamic is one of the best parts of this season. Keith and Wes have this very adorable and playful rivalry and banter where they take shots at each other, but clearly love one another deeply. It's honestly extremely wholesome. And even if they're putting on a show in public, in private, they talk about how much they adore one another. I mean, look at how glowingly Keith talks about his son in confessional. Wes is a good kid. He ain't been in jail yet, uh, you know. But he does make some mistakes. I can just give him my words of wisdom about all I can do. Ain't been in jail yet. Well, if he keeps wagging that tongue around, he'll probably get there eventually. P put it away. Put it away. At number four is Nick, who celebrated his 29th birthday during Survivor Winners at War. Nick spent his birthday, the day of the merge boot, thinking that Adam was going home, not knowing the real discussion that everyone else was having was whether to vote out him or Wendell. Nick's understandably upset that his closest ally was blindsided here, but he's even more upset when he learns from Michelle that he was on the block. Yes, it's not a very happy birthday for Nick Wilson. Come on, Nick, you've barely touched your banana kaboom. The next day, Sarah feels a bit bad that Nick was bamboozled so hard on his birthday, so she offers to give up her spot on a team reward won by herself, Kim, Sophie, Michelle, and Ben, and give it to Nick as a belated birthday gift. Which makes Nick very happy, not only because he loves Chinese takeout, but he also loves the ladies. Nick enjoys his reward well enough, but this is a pretty huge blunder on Sarah's part, honestly. I'm willing to buy her explanation that she was just being a nice person and this wasn't game motivated, but everyone else views it as transparent jury pandering. It bought her no additional goodwill with Nick, and Tony even lectures her as soon as they get back to camp about how she just put a huge target on her back. And that she did. Later this episode, Sarah is briefly the majority vote, but because this is Winners at War, the target changes fairly quickly, and Sarah recovers rather gracefully from her objectively terrible decision to be a nice human being. Still, it was nice to see Nick actually get to enjoy some Chinese food for his birthday lunch on Survivor, even if he did get a little known disadvantage. Ah, thanks, Sarah. At number three is Kelly Wentworth, who celebrated her 29th birthday during Survivor Cambodia. Kelly's actually spent three birthdays on the island, and all have been acknowledged by the show in one way or another, in what is most definitely a first. In San Juan del Sur, her dad Dale lamented that he had to root against her in a challenge on day six, and in a secret scene for Edge of Extinction, the Lesu tribe sings her happy birthday. Happy birthday to you! Yeah, I uh, see why this one was cut. 
But it's her Cambodia B-Day that is by far the best. At Post Swap to KO, Kelly's birthday comes and goes, and Cass views the opportunity as a way to soften her image. I'd argue that Cass had the biggest target on her back of any player going into Cambodia. She was on a recent and popular season, and was notorious for creating chaos strategically and socially. She was on top of most everyone's hit list to take down first. Prior to the game, however, Cass read self-help books and learned how to connect with people on a human level and earn their trust. Case in point, during the preseason, one of her promo videos had this shot in it. I honestly thought she was just memeing, but no, this was legit. Cass puts all that newfound knowledge of winning friends and influencing people to work the morning of day 11 of Cambodia, crafting what looks like a fake immunity idol in plain sight. This would be a pretty baller move, and it's definitely believable that a Cass who just saw Tony win by bulldozing his way to the end and wearing his advantages at Tribal Council would learn from the best and just make a fake idol five feet from the shelter. But this is new, nice Cass. It's not a fake idol, it's a birthday present. A good luck charm for Wentworth, which actually blesses Takeo with a solid immunity win at the following immunity challenge. Cass gets a super winnery quote here, saying that the winner of the season will be someone who truly embraces the second chance theme and changes up their gameplay in a meaningful way. Um, what's that I smell? A Chaos Cast winner edit? Ah, uh, nope. Sorry. The gas was leaking. At number two is Danny, who celebrated her 30th birthday during Survivor Guatemala with a bona fide pool party. Following Yasha's reward win in episode seven, they're all in good spirits. The lines and chocolate tend to do that to you. Such good spirits, in fact, that in a Survivor first, they paddle on over to Nakum's camp to invite them over for a birthday party for Danny. Nakum mulls the offer over. Jamie's a little hesitant because he doesn't much care for Bobby John. But eventually, Stephanie, Rafe, and Judd convince the gang that an afternoon at the pool eating leftover chocolate would be a lot more fun than an afternoon, uh, playing Uno with leaves. Nakum paddles their boat on over, enjoys some chocolates, Gary and Amy reconnect with their old tribe mates, everyone's having a grand time under the sun, except for one person, Jamie. Yes, Jamie spends Danny's whole birthday party brooding in a corner. There's always one person like this at every birthday party, isn't there? Jamie was completely opposed to enjoying himself because in his mind, this is more than a game. It's tribal warfare, and you rarely, if ever, see rival army generals playfully splashing each other in the kitty section of the local pool. Jamie's the total star of Danny's birthday bash, pouting and whimpering the whole time before insisting his tribe prematurely leave, which they do, much to everyone's disapproval. Jamie sometimes, like, freaks me out. I just don't understand where the kid's head's at sometimes. I'm not going to back down to somebody like him, so there could be a clash. Wait, but you just did. This is the first of only two non-One World times that members from one tribe actually went and visited another tribe. The second was in Cook Islands, whereas that one was accidental. Aussie, Cowboy, and Flicka accidentally wandered into Raro's camp. This was clearly allowed by production, for reasons I'm still not sure on. Maybe they wanted to spice up the season, I don't know. Maybe they just wanted to see old Gary Hawkins, humble landscaper, flex those social chops with some strangers. Man, that guy knows everything about anchor blocks. The most iconic Survivor birthday belongs to Rodney, who celebrated his 25th birthday during Survivor Worlds Apart. Boston Rod had not had much luck post-merge, failing to win any individual immunities or rewards up to this point, and also beyond this point, and he really, really, really wanted a pick-me-up. After the tribe does the customary acknowledgments of his date of birth, Will and Mama C both make comments to Rodney that they'll take him should they win reward. In fact, it's generally agreed by everyone that Rodney deserves a reward, so just bring him along. But when Mike, Mama C, and Sierra do win the reward as a team, none of them are willing to give up their spot. I personally did not say I would step away from my team. But some people made comments and said some things, so when you go back from your word a little bit, it kind of, it's just my birthday. You know what I mean? It's my damn birthday, but it is what it is. Okay, guys, he's all right. He's just a little hot from the challenge loss, He'll calm down when he gets back to the beach. 
washing dishes on my birthday. Nine miserable days left on this island. It doesn't even grow coconuts or any fruits. Nothing. Ah, uh, it's okay, guys. He's just a little hot from all the dirty dishes. He'll calm down when he gets back to camp. I'm really pissed at Mama C, though. On my birthday. Okay, Rodney was clearly not happy about this birthday betrayal, so he comes up with the perfect excuse to continue whining long into the evening. His plan is to pretend he's so mad about not going on reward on his birthday that he wants to be voted out, and Mike will be lulled into a false sense of security and they can vote him out instead. But Mike sees through this plan almost instantly, so all this whining is just whining, not strategic whining. Fast forward two days later to the immunity challenge, and you'll never guess who's still mad about their birthday snub. And is this related to your birthday? Because I know that was a big deal. Worst birthday of my life. I did dishes on an island that I haven't left in 32 days. <laughs> Forget about it. Yeah, I also hate when I celebrate my birthday on a Nicaraguan beach, having made the final seven in a million dollar game. Got it. Uh, terrible. Anyway, you guys didn't think this was a one episode arc, did you? Oh no, Rodney's a birthday week kinda dude. During the next episode's reward challenge, Rodney again complains that Mama C didn't take him on reward, making Rodney's birthday a legitimate multi-episode story arc. At the Worlds Apart reunion, Jeff writes the wrongs of Rodney's tribe mates, getting him a cake and an autograph as everyone sings happy birthday finally bringing justice to the world. Although, the cake's a little small, Jeff. God, how much more betrayal can I take? Got nothing else for ya. Don't make me do the dishes on my birthday. Like and subscribe, and I'll get you more Survivor content just like this. Until next time, don't get idled out.